Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Life by the Bow. We're going on a pretty big adventure, I would have to say. We go down, we go down together. Oh! oh. Clay, just get me to the beach. <laughs> we want to get isolated, like that's the key. We want to make sure that we're completely alone because it's just such a cool feeling. Oh no. Well, this is camping at its finest. <laughs> Down here in South Florida, the Southeast, the Florida Keys, the West Coast is extremely developed. Yeah. But the southwestern coast of Florida is actually part of Everglades National yeah. Park. So it is completely isolated away from any type of civilization here in Florida. I'm super excited. I'm a little nervous only because we are in the 39 and we're doing things we typically do in our bay boat. So we're going to be, you know, going off to the Gulf of Mexico mm -hmm. and crossing Florida Bay. Yeah. We've decided to take this boat into the shallow backwaters, camp inside of it, hit the beaches. We got about 80 miles to go. So ride along. Let's do it. All right, so we just made it into Tavernier Creek and this is step one of our journey and that's crossing through to the bay side. Typically, whenever we're doing any type of trip in this boat or just boating in general, it's mainly on the Atlantic side where the water is a lot cleaner, it's clearer. But like we were saying, we're gonna be fishing the Gulf of Mexico, which just has some pristine waters. But the paradise that we're gonna reap before we actually fish is what I'm most excited about. Just because there's just the most beautiful beaches, these little bays that you can get tucked back inside of but it's sketchy because you have to be very careful because since the water is so dirty, it's so hard to navigate number one and number two, you always have to make sure that you're sticking to the correct path because it gets shallow really quick. So last thing we wanna do is beach our brand new boat way up inside the back country. So it's gonna be fun. of the entire trip but it's also difficult you know you got to make sure that you're sticking to the intercoastal you keep an eye out for flats all the shoals but and you also have to be careful with all the buoys yeah they're the just buoys. lined up here this time of year all the stone crab traps are out so you got to watch out for the buoys you hit one of those buoys not only are you going to damage someone's livelihood but you could also damage a lower unit at this point we're going to start making our trek towards the north to hit the west coast. The next stop is the beaches. Wow, look at this seagrass. Look at all those pilchards, a lot oh, of the them. turtle, it's in the grass. <laughs> this is just gorgeous. I mean, I don't have words to explain how beautiful it is to be back here and see this crystal clear water with all the seagrass around. Well, another thing is too, <sighs> is there's no horizon. It's I know. so calm and the beautiful. skies are so clear. If I would have known this sooner, I would have done this crossing a long time ago. Right? <laughs> and this is just the beginning too. I know. But yeah, we just had to stop and just look at how crystal clear the water is. And that's what happens when you have seagrass. You have seagrass, the seagrass filters the water and helps its clarity. So far we've traveled about 60 miles, we've burned about 57 gallons of fuel, and we have officially made it here to Middle Cape. And as you can see, the water has completely changed. So we have to be very careful when we're getting the boat up into some of these places here because we don't want to beach it. Can't see the bottom, so we're paying attention to our sonar. And uh, basically, Stephanie and I, we're just going to get off here 
and just enjoy the beach for a little while. It's such a cool spot. If you guys ever have a day where you just want to travel over from the Keys or even Naples or Marco Island, I mean, Middle Cape is just such a beautiful spot. All right, so this is our tender right here, which is a black fin paddle board. Shout out to our friend Steve, who's the owner of black fin and eye rocker and nautical paddle boards. He hooked us up with this inflatable paddle board and it's sweet because it just fits right inside of this bag here. And this is what we're gonna use to shuttle to and from the beach. Hopefully we don't fall in. And we only brought one too. Yeah, we got so. one. Clay's gonna be doing all the work. I'm gonna do the heavy lifting. <laughs> all right, tender splash test. It floats. She floats. And we're off. Oh, look at that crocodile. Look at that. There's a python too. Do you think he's friendly? <laughs> Lando! Just take me to a beach, doesn't- I'm trying my best. Well. If we go in, if we go down, we go down together. Please stop. I'm not doing that on purpose. I feel like you are. I swear on my life, I'm not doing that on purpose. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> Clay, just get me to the beach. <laughs> Lando! Wait. Right, go ahead. <laughs> Send me <laughs> All right, safe and sound on Middle Cape Beach. Stephanie is back there making some sandwiches. But check this out. This is just beautiful, man. The weather is perfect. Winds are probably at about, I'd say, five knots. And then if you walk down into the water, the water temperature is probably, I'd say, about in the high 60s. So you feel the heat, then you dip your toes into the water and you feel the cool water and you feel the sand between your toes. And what's so crazy about the beaches here, where we're at specifically, they're untouched. You will rarely see people out here. I mean, you'll see people camping, but it's just such a low key spot. I mean, you can just see on both sides of the beaches. There's just no one here. I mean, when's the last time you've ever went to a beach? and there's absolutely nobody in sight. Very comparable to the Bahamas for me, except you don't have the clear water. What I think is most cool more than anything, is right behind us. We're gonna be camping in that boat tonight. Stephanie and I were just casting here on the beach. Just working a gulp, I got a nice snook on right now. Are you sure? It almost looks like a rat. I'm positive, that's a snook. Oh, nice is it? snook. I hope he stays on. So cool. That's a big one. Don't. I want to make sure that you use it. That is a big snow. That's a nice snow. Lip him, babe. Yeah, I am, but I don't want to lose him. Come on, come on. Ah, sweet. Check that out right there. Talk about a way to start the camping fishing trip. So cool. Look at how he was barely hooked, too. Look at that. Oh yeah, you can see that. He was just about to pull off too. If I wasn't running down the beach with him, I probably wouldn't even have gotten him. But what's so cool is they have that black little lateral line. They use that to pick up vibrations in the water to feed on bait fish. And that's exactly what he was doing. He was up in the shallows, trying to eat all those mullet. And he is so healthy, man. So what do you have planned for today? You're looking at it. There's a lot of life around. There's so much life right now. I mean, just sitting down here on the beach, I mean, we, we're seeing massive schools of mullet. I saw a big tarpon. As soon as I came paddle boarding up on the beach, there's sharks, dolphins. I mean, the beauty out here is endless. I mean, you don't even have to go fishing. I just want to go fishing for tomorrow, but come out here, get your family, your kids, maybe a friend, girlfriend, wife. I mean, you want to talk about the most peaceful thing in the world. I mean, this is what life is supposed to be like, in my honest opinion. Can I have my water back?
So we just made it into the entrance of Shark River. So you can see we got a couple neighbors in here, which is kind of a nice feeling because you don't feel so alone. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run a little further up inside the river and we wanna get isolated, like that's the key. We wanna make sure that we're completely alone because it's just such a cool feeling. But sun's going down and we're able to kind of just like take in all the scenery, which is just beautiful back in here. I mean, it almost feels like you're in a different planet. Just all the big mangroves, there's a dolphin right there. That's so cool. Coming to say what's up. One thing I can tell you is I feel one with nature. I mean, you hear all these little fish popping. You see all these different bugs bumping into you. You really feel like you're living the outdoor experience. I love it though, it's amazing. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is set up our home, so to speak. <laughs> so the front of the boat is going to be our bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then the back of the boat is where we're going to cook. Going to get the tent going, the air mattress put up, and then we're going to get to cooking. Maybe we should have brought the single person one, no? Yeah, look at that. We're good. We're golden. We're golden. So look, there's, oh. an, there's, an, there's an outlet. You know what I didn't bring? What? An extension cord for the air mattress. Oh no. Well, this is camping at its finest. There's always something you forget. And unfortunately this time it was <laughs> pretty big. Yeah, something pretty important. <laughs> it's filling up. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have much room to fill though. You gotta carry it up. It's gonna work though. We got this. You got it? I think we got it. All right. We Wait. did it. Bedroom is officially set up. Now we're going to get cooking in the kitchen. Yeah, we're doing steaks, baked potato, and lamb chops. Something we have learned the hard way is when you go and you rough it out, you got to eat good. <laughs> yes. And one thing is, is the last time we went camping, we didn't bring enough carbs. So we were so hungry. We ran out of energy real quick. So I brought all types of carbs this time and we're ready to go. Mm, mm, mm. When you're spending this much time around fish, you gotta make sure that you bring something from the land. Have our baked potato just finished up in the grill. Got some lamb chops going in there. Gosh, you can't beat a steak while camping. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, well, that is a wrap on the day. Stephanie's getting inside the tent. I'm gonna get right behind her. We'll see you guys first thing in the morning. Well, good morning from Everglades National Park. I'm not gonna lie, sleeping last night was a little tough. Reason why is because our air mattress like completely deflated. So I guess it's a pretty good sign to uh, replace it and buy a new one, but hey, it is what it is. But just waking up here, first thing in the morning, the mist over the mangroves, I mean, the peacefulness, the calmness, it's just beautiful it doesn't get any better than this but what i did is i woke up really really early at about 4 30 started rigging all of our rods because as you guys know we're going fishing today through the cast net a couple times caught some bait and what's nice about it i was able to just do it here while the boat was anchored all the pilchards started flipping around the boat through the net a couple times but uh we're gonna pull up the anchor collapse the tent put away the air mattress, and we are going 50 miles out into the Gulf of Mexico. 
So there's a saying that says it's better late than never. But hey, we had a lot to get done, but it is just beautiful. Huge shout out to Waterland Sunglasses, our 2023 sponsor, and then of course our clothing company. You can't forget about Avail Gear. We have some new colors in the fleece hoodies, as you guys can see here, and we're wearing them because it's gonna be a cool ride out there. Performance on the outside, fleece underneath to keep you warm, but I'm pumped. I'm excited. I'm ready to make something happen. Mm -hmm. So I originally had plans of just hauling butt offshore, but that was brought to a halt real quick. The reason why is because we're in some really bad fog right now. And fog can actually be really dangerous. In my opinion, it's more dangerous to drive in fog than it is to drive at night. The reason why, at night, you can at least see lights. You can see other boats coming, but I can't see more than, say, 100 yards all around me. So by running the radar, I can track other boats. I can track markers potentially anything that's coming in any direction around me. So that's a key. I mean, that's another great reason to have radar on your boat, but we're just taking it really nice and easy, burning a mile per gallon, going about 35 miles an hour. So far this trip, we've burned 100 gallons, we've got 400 gallons left. So hopefully we make it to where we're going safe and sound. All right, well, we made it to our destination. And it's safe to say where we're at right now definitely isn't a secret. <laughs> There's a few other boats here. There's as well. a lot of other boats here. Three to be specific, but this is a very well known area for Cobia. And I'm not seeing anybody hooked up, but that's not to say that we can't. Let's do our best. So, right now, I'm just jigging. Ooh! And I'm on. That's a jack. She got a jack? Yeah, you could tell by the head shakes. Cobias don't really do a lot of head shakes. Definitely. Look, look, look. Oh, look at that. Big jack? Yeah. Looks like a big one. We don't eat these guys. So Clay tells me there's a lot of a lot of sharks in here, so I'm happy we got this de-hooker. And I just lift up. <laughs> oh! That's I... one way to do it, right? We came up with something here. Red grouper season just opened up today. Red grouper will be nice. Plus, we came prepared <gasps> with some That's ceviche. That's exactly what it yeah, is! Yeah, red grouper. Nice. Now, is he legal? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah, no, I'm not even gonna bother measuring him. But sure enough, that's the right one right there. Look at that. Let me do some close-ups real quick. Look at that. That's exactly what we're after. Mm -hmm. We got our Cobia, baby. Woo. Hey, we got what we came for, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not sure if he's a keeper. They gotta be 36 inches to the fork, but man, if we get to keep one, that would make my day, man. Cobia tastes so good. Easily one of my favorite. Oh, he's going under the boat. Favorite fish. Great we job. have to go through heck just to catch one of these things, man. A lot of the times you have to come out here into the Gulf on these wrecks, and you gotta have the weather to come out here. Whew. And these things will work you too. So we forgot a net. So we're gonna use a shrimping net to pull them in. <laughs> there you go. Oh, under the boat. The net. No, he didn't. All right, keep it going. Do it again. I'm just trying to record something, Clay. Yeah. I think you're gonna go have to head, in, head first. He won't. He turns. He keeps turning. Yeah, head first though. You Look, just gotta he's got more stuck on. You him. gotta get him head first. Okay. Head first. Head first. There you go. Here, me. I got the net. <laughs> Bring that fish in. <laughs> Good job, Stephanie. Hold I can't on, hold believe on. that. I got the, the camera on one hand and the net in the other. I couldn't carry him over, though. Yeah. Check that out, man. 
so cool. Stephanie's gonna get a measuring tape right now. We're gonna see if he's legal or not. So you're yeah. gonna do from he's him? He's short. He's good thing we didn't. Yep, that's why you don't gaff him. What is he, 33? 33? 33 inches. He would have been legal a while ago. I'm gonna release them real quick because they are so strong. I don't want him to beat himself up. Woo! There, there he go. goes. Hey, we got one. <laughs> Well, we're still on our journey to try and catch a cobia. Caught one this morning, wasn't big enough to keep. And we haven't given up. And we've been fishing for one all day. Massive school of jacks here. It's really fighting. Just all flash. Yeah, big old jack. It's a big old jack. Look at that. Babe, you know Ooh. how to catch jack. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a pretty big one. It's massive. This guy wasn't getting off, man. Bent the hook. Dang. It's a big guy. Check that out. It's a big fish. That's a Jack Cravel right there. Yep, not one we're gonna eat. They have really, really red meat. Not the tastiest, but a good fight. Woo! My bicep, I don't think ever feels this sore my, after working out. My forearm, my bicep, <laughs> I mean, oh. the cat's out of the bag at this point. I mean, the goal behind today is we were trying yeah. to catch cobia. And because of that, like, we didn't film as much as we could. I mean, we caught lane snappers, groupers, mm -hmm. we caught that cobia first thing in the morning. It wasn't big enough to keep. And we've just yeah. been picking away at it all yeah. day, just going from spot to spot. But, um, you know, the truth is, some days you're just not successful. No, and really, this whole thing was, was about, about going camping. Fishing's fishing. Fishing's fishing. I'm beat. It's, yeah. it's time to eat some food yeah. and just enjoy the sunset. Well, here's the thing, Clay. Huh. It's a good thing I brought food. Just yeah. <laughs> Because we sure as heck aren't eating fish. No, we're not. So Ooh. we just made it back to home base for the night. Yeah. And sadly, this is the end of the trip for you guys. But Stephanie and I, we're going to put down the camera, set up the tent, anchor up, and we're going to call it a day for right now. But, you know, the biggest takeaway from all of this is, you know, sometimes you don't always accomplish what you want to. And for us, that was catching the cobia. But you know we definitely did have a ton of fun camping and it mm. wasn't easy that's one thing i can say for mm. sure but yeah you know sometimes you need to throw a little discomfort in your life to know just how good that you actually have it you know anything you're you set your mind to sometimes it just takes a little patience to get there we may have not caught them today mm -hmm. however I'm sure we will catch them when we come back. <laughs> Without a doubt. And take that with you going into 2023, guys. Yeah. You know, we hope it's been an amazing start to the year. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whatever it is, keep on getting after it. But <laughs> We're staying persistent. <laughs> exactly. And that's the key. And determined. <laughs> that is the key. Guys, we appreciate you all so much. Till next week. See you then. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.